In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.
And I will talk a little bit about a uh, brief history about the Church of the East. How did the Church of the East begin? Thomas the Apostle, along with Adday or St. Jude and Mary, went to the Mesopotamia area, the land of the two rivers, Euphrates and Tigris, to evangelize to the to the pagans, Aramaic speaking. Assyrians, Babylonians, who resided in the region, and also Jewish. They brought Christianity to the region and evangelized all the people. Now, the Chaldean Catholic Church has as its members the Chaldeans and the Assyrian people who are descendants from the people who were evangelized by the Thomas, by St. Thomas, and are part of the Catholic Church being one of the Eastern Rites. A lot of people, they think the Catholic Church is only Latin Rite, but actually, yes, the Latin Rite is the, the, the major one, the, the big one, but there is Eastern Catholic Rites, and it's mentioned in Canon, Canon 28, it says a Rite is a liturgical, theological, spiritual, and disciplinary patrimony, culture, and circumstances of history of a distinct people by which its own manner of living, the faith, is manifested in each church, so whereas the, right, the rights treated in this code, unless otherwise stated, are those which arise from the Alexandrian, Antiochian, Armenian, Chaldean, and Constantinopolitan traditions. So, one of the five Eastern traditions, one of them is the Chaldean tradition. And if you are interested, you want to know about the Chaldean or Church of the East tradition. We have one church, I told you, St. Mary's Church in Campbell. We do Mass every Sunday, 11 o'clock, and we pray in our own language, Aramaic language, the same language that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke. The main language of our church is the Aramaic language, the language spoken by Christ himself. So, we call ourselves Assyrians, Chaldeans, mentioned in the Bible, but our church is Chaldean Catholic Church, one of the Eastern Rites. What are the Eastern Rites? The Eastern Rites of the Catholic Church are groups within the one church that maintain their own language, heritage and liturgy, all while being united to Rome and the Pope. All Eastern Rites have their own Patriarch. The Patriarch of our Church resides in Baghdad, Iraq, and his name is Luis Rafael Sacco. He's in the, in the picture here. Traditionally, the see of our Patriarch is called Babylon. So he's the Patriarch of Sea of Pat Babylon. Our church, from the beginning until now, we were always persecuted for our faith, our Christian faith. And why is that? Because always the rulers and, and, and who govern the eastern part of the world, they were not Christians. Never happened in 2000 years that Mesopotamia was ruled by Christian rulers. Just what, as what happened with the Western, where the uh, King Constantine, he converted into Christianity and the Christians of the West, they, they um, felt the relief after, afterward. But for us, Christians of the East, East of Euphrates, never. So for 2,000 years we are persecuted because of the rulers, even now, even nowadays. Over the centuries, the Church of the East has really not had a long period of time when it, when it was not being persecuted, much like the Catholic Church as a whole. There has always been an empire or religion group that has persecuted our Church. Examples of this are the Zoroastrians, pagans who worshipped fire, mainly Persian and Medians, 
the Mongolians, when they invaded our land, the Mesopotamia, and also the Muslims, we are under Muslim rule since the 7th century. Just want to give you a very uh, rough estimate. At the 6th century, there were 6 to 7 million people in the Mesopotamia or Iraq nowadays. 60-70% were Christians in Iraq. 60-70% means 4 or 5 million. Nowadays, we are only 1%. There's only 500, 600,000 people left in, in Iraq. I just brought um, a few uh, of our martyrs that maybe you, you haven't heard about them. One of them is the story of Mar Shimon Bar Sabai. Shimon means Simon, Bar Sabai, son of the uh, Bar Sabai, 4th century patriarch of the Church of the East. Zora, the Zoroastrian king, Shabur II, imposed an evil tax on the Christians of the region and asked the patriarch to collect it. The patriarch said, I am no tax collector, but a shepherd of the Lord's flock. He was given an offer to renounce Christ and worship the Son as the Zoroastrians did, but he refused. Because of his refusal, he, wa he washed, fa washed five of his bishops and hundreds of priests get beheaded, just like nowadays, before he was beheaded too. This happened in the 4th century. He is the first patriarch martyr of the Church of the East. It is said that as they were being martyred, the patriarch, Mar Shimon Bar Sabaye, led all the bishops and priests in singing a hymn that is sung in every Chaldean liturgy, even now, for 1700 years. It says, This is Aramaic. We give you thanks, O Lord of all. We glorify you, Jesus Christ. You raise our bodies into life. You are the Savior of our souls. This was the, the, the prayer that he sung for all the bishops and the priests before they were beheaded. I have another martyr, maybe you never heard, Mar Kardach. The story of Mar Kardach goes, Kardach was raised by Zoroastrian parents in the Persian army. He grew up to be a handsome, smart, and very talented young man, the kind of the empire Shapur, the, the Persian empire, uh, king Shapur, grew fond of him and ended up giving him a region to govern. Ardagh oh, met a Christian hermit in his region and debated very much with him. After some miraculous things happened, he believed in Jesus Christ with the help of the hermit and was baptized. His family rejected him very strongly and the king sent people to have him executed. He took an army to fight the king's people and fought them off for months on a mountain in north of Mesopotamia. During this time, he had a vision of Saint Stephen, who told him that he should accept martyrdom instead of continuing to fight like that. He surrendered and his father threw the first stone at him and he was thrown to death. Mar a modern martyr of our church. A couple years ago, Father Raghi Gani. He was Chaldean priest living in Mosul. In 2007, as he was leaving Mass one Sunday and in a car with three deacons, they were stopped by Muslim extremists. 
they were asked to denounce their faith and when they refused they were shot and died on the spot and their bodies were left in the street for hours martyr father Raghid Ghani Archbishop Paulus Faraj Raho that's another modern martyr the story of Archbishop Paulus Faraj Raho he was the bishop of Father Raghid Ghani in the Diocese of Mosul he was the Bishop of Diocese of Mosul, Iraq. In 2008, he was kidnapped by Muslim extremists. He found a way to call his church during his captivity and urge them not to pay the high ransom for his release. Because he said it would be used to promote the evil ways of his captors. After two weeks of his captivity, his body was found dead in a grave. The Church of the Martyrs. Because of so much persecution over the centuries, the Church of the East has been called by many the Church of the Martyrs. Something that developed in our liturgy over the years is a group of hymns that are sung during our liturgical season of the Apostles called Martyr's Hymns. It was composed at the 5th century by a Western father, Mar Marotha. He came from Syria. And when he heard about all the stories of the martyrs, he composed these hymns. And we pray these hymns every day, twice, in the morning prayer and the evening prayer. These hymns speak of the glories of the martyrs and ask for their prayers. The future of the Church of the East. The Church is in a diaspora unlike any other time in our history. We are spread all over the world. But a hymn from the martyr hymns puts our situation into perspective. That says, you may move from land to land, but you will not leave your Lord. You bring the treasure of life to each land you enter in. And we carry our treasure with us, and that is Jesus. Really, the Christian of the Church of the East, we are now, majority lives in the diaspora, in Europe, in, in Canada, United States, Australia, and a small portion of us remains in Iraq, and some in Syria, maybe a couple hundred thousand, and and if things is, will continue the way they are, we're expecting that most of them will leave the country. If no solution was achieved uh, in the in the fight that's happening now between the extremists and the local governments, but still, wherever we go, we always preserve our faith and wherever we go we we come together we build our communities and the moment we have enough financial we buy churches and we thank God that we have many churches we have two dioceses in the United States the East and the West and we have more than 24 25 churches and there's more like maybe 400 500 thousand people worship in their own liturgy, Chaldean liturgy, in the United States. We have a couple hundred thousand people in the Canada, also in Europe and Australia. So wherever we go, we keep our treasure, which is Jesus Christ, who saved us all these 2,000 years. What can faithful Catholics do to help? We must keep these people in our prayers. The Christians of the Middle East, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Jerusalem, and Egypt. We must make sure we are living good Christian lives and appreciating the easy access we have to the sacraments, unlike them. 
they're not, they don't have easy access to the sacraments. They're doing masses in tents now, and sometimes uh, they don't even have the uh, privilege to do that. We must live our Christian faith strongly because they can't. We need to do our part here for their own sake. That's why we emphasize on our faith, our right, our church, our identity given by God here, so they will be always strengthened and that so that we can help them from here to our people in the Middle East. See, despite what is happening, what happened in the last 2,000 years, especially these the last 10 years, what's happening in Iraq and Syria because of ISIS. I heard uh, a report from a bishop of, a Chaldean bishop of Kirkuk, that he said, no Christian from Chaldean church ever converted to Islam. Ever. They either prefer to die or flee away or give taxes. But in the Chaldean church, no one recently has accepted to reject Jesus Christ and receive another religion. They remain faithful to their Lord because they believe the goodness and the glory that is awaiting for them. So I think this will give us uh, courage. If they can do it, I think we can do it here too. We should not be ashamed of Jesus Christ. We should declare him to the people here. I think what's happening in the Middle East is for us to do what we're supposed to do. To declare this, the, the, the salvation and our faith to, to the American people, to, to the new movement that, are, that is growing in the United States, the modernism, the, the liberal movement. It's, I think the evil grows when the good, when the good people are not doing their parts. All, all, all we need for the evil to grow and is for the good not to do his part. So what's happening back there is given us courage and power that we will stand with no shame, with proud by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we will help our people here in the United States to lead them to the to this salvation and to become tool tools in the hand of the Lord to bring Christianity again to our neighbors here in the United States. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, it was just a, a very short. Uh, just like I say, if you are interested, if you want to know about um, the Eastern Church, the Chaldean Rite, I mean, you must welcome. Tomorrow is a very good day. We're having festival. You can come there. You will see our people. Most of them are from Iraq, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Jerusalem. So come there, and if you want to participate in our liturgy, it's in Aramaic. It starts at 11 o'clock. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Um, I will invite Father Bernard uh, to, uh, to give his speech. Thanks.